Hey everyone. Um, recently we had a really strong trend day on Thursday and I missed the entire thing. Ended up taking the late trade up here. And every time we get a massive trend like this and I make $0 on it, um, I put it in a folder called uh, Massive Bull Trends where I make $0. And so this went into that folder. Um, and so this weekend I wanted to take some time and look at all of the ones all those massive bull trends where I didn't make any money, didn't take any trades, think about why I didn't enter and um, how I can start to, to improve on that and get into those, those trends. One big factor for me is I'm trying to make my, my entries more rule-based, um, but even with that, there's the discretion of, for example, if we get a strong breakout, um, my rule is that I can buy the first pullback below a bad sell signal. The reason I didn't buy below 18 is because that rule is negated if it's a climactic move up. So if it happened, um, let's say this was a full trading range with no bull bars here and we went sideways, and then we got two strong bull bars, then I could buy below um, the Doji 18. But because it was coming, I don't know, nine bars into the trend, I was saying this is climactic, so I can't buy the, full, the first pullback um, below a bad sell. I have to wait for it to fall below the last big bull bar. And so that, entry was missed because of my interpretation of what's considered climactic. And I was considering this climactic. And so even with a rules-based approach for the entry, as long as I'm thinking everything is climactic, um, I'm going to miss so many of these strong trends. So I wanted to look into all these, uh, these charts that I have um, that were, that have similar breakouts and understand why I'm missing them and how I can start to, to capitalize on them. Um, so I'm going to mix it with, parts of the interview with Al about how he um, describes getting into these trends and managing the trades. So I'll play little clips of that interview throughout um, and kind of use that advice and things he said in the past to figure out how to best approach these types of trends. So the first thing and the most important is um, Al talking about how to approach trends when you feel like you really want to pull back, but it's not coming. I think one of the mistakes that traders make is if they don't take a trade, or if they, if they miss a trade and then the market starts to do what they thought it was going to do, they start saying, oh, I got to wait for a pullback. Mm -hmm. Well, if the trade is really good, you ain't going to get a pullback. It's just going to keep going on without you. So as soon as you tell yourself, oh, I got to wait for a pullback, I gotta, as soon as you have that feeling, buy at the market and trade very small and use a wide stop. You know, if you're hoping for a pullback, that means the market is really strong and everybody is looking to buy pullbacks, even really tiny pullbacks. So you're going to have to wait a lot of bars before you get a pullback that you want. You know, everybody else is buying, you know, one point pullbacks, two point pullbacks, while you're waiting for a 10 point two legged pullback. Um, you're going to wait all, a long, long time and you're missing a great trend. So, you know, once you look at something and say, boy, I wish I took that buy, buy the market, you know, buy small. 20% of your position, but buy the market. You know, anytime, anytime you look at a chart and you say, boy, I wish I was long, you know, you gotta just, just buy, All right? Don't yeah. wish and don't wait for the pullback, just buy. The stronger the trend, the more you're going to have to buy far above the moving average. Right. And the more it's a channel and the, and the bigger the legs in the channel, the more you're gonna be buying at the moving average. But in a really strong trend like this, um, you know, you're not, you know, look at this. It was above the moving average for 30 bars, right? So if you wait for a pullback to the moving average, you're not going to trade. So I'm going to go through um, three major factors of strong breakouts, the quality of the breakout, the market structure overall, and the management of that breakout and how to, how to approach the entries and exits, uh, at least from what I've found. So what I've found to be useful and, um, what I'm going to try to start doing. So I just wanted to share it in case anyone else has been struggling um, with the same thing. Because I feel like advanced traders and really good traders, days like this is like a piece of cake. It's such an easy day. Whereas for me, I found it to be hard to enter. And I think that is uh, an area we have to improve. Because if, if one trader of a certain skill level is finding this to be extremely easy, which I mean, in hindsight, it looks so easy, then there's definitely some work to do and some room to um, uh, to improve here. So for the quality of the breakout, uh, I looked at breakouts of an established range 
but it has to happen before 2 p.m. Eastern. So the move has to start before 2. So here we had an early opening range and then breakout. Uh, this is an example where it happened later, but it started at 1 o'clock Eastern. Usually it moves that uh, trading ranges that last past 2 o'clock and then get a breakout. There just isn't enough time left in the day to become a really big bull trend. And um, also there hasn't been much energy all day, so it's less likely to go very far. And uh, I should mention that these are all only the bull case, and it's not a comprehensive search of all charts that meet this criteria. It's only the ones that I had saved in the category of um, missing trends. Uh, when, when, that, when the day finished and I realized that I should have been in, um, I just saved those charts in a specific folder. So um, it's not completely comprehensive, but it covers a lot of the really big, strong breakouts from the last couple of years. Um, the next criteria is strong consecutive bars clearly breaking out of the range. So it should have two really big bull bars or three to six big bars, medium to big bars. Uh, so for here, for example, we have two really big bull bars, but we also have four consecutive growing bars. Um, here we have two massive big bull bars. Here again, three, four really big bull bars. So these are all the ones that I looked at. This one started after two. The reason I included it is because it completely changed the day. Um, like it made the entire day just completely tiny. So when it's a dominant move, um, I think it increases the chances that it's gonna get a, a trend up, even if it happens after two. So this one I included. And then uh, little to no alternation. So consecutive bars, um, consecutive bull bars, and not uh, bars that are separated by dojis or bear bars. So it needs to have consecutive strong bull bars all in a row. The, the more that there's alternation and pauses, um, the more likely it is to be a bull leg in a trading range. So when it comes to market structure, um, it was really important for me to go through all these breakouts and see that it follows this type of structure that Al talks about all the time, spike and channel and then trading range. But it was really important for me to see it and realize that I'm getting scared here. Like here, I'm getting scared on 16, 17, 18 and thinking, well, this is too climactic, I can't buy anymore. When in fact, this is just the beginning. This is just right here. So just to see so many examples of this, that spike, tight channel, and then strong break becomes a trading range, not a reversal. And that eventually leads to trend resumption. So in this example, I, was, I stopped thinking about buying here, but that's just phase one, uh, spike phase. And then we enter a tight channel. And then we get a break, it leads to a triangle, a trading range, and um, trend resumption up to four. I started buying here, but there was there were way more opportunities to buy all throughout this. Um, another example, so these two bars, these three bars, all part of the spike phase. So nothing to worry about here. Then we get one, pull back two, that becomes a channel, then strong break becomes a trading range, and then we got resumption on the gap up the next day. Same thing here, went sideways for two hours, really strong break, far above all this, and then we entered a tight channel, pullback, so it breaks the trend line of the channel sideways, and this is only sideways for a tight trading range, didn't even go sideways for that long, and then trend resumption and another tight trading range. So I'm getting scared here, and there's this much left, and so it's just really eye-opening for me to see that. Same thing here, this is August 15th, 2022. I didn't buy any of this. Um, I think I actually I think I bought about 24, but I scalped out. And then once we got um, 27, 28, I thought this is too climactic. And then I let everything else go. But again, spike, channel, break, trading range, resumption to a new high. And that just goes on and on. Spike, first pullback, and then channel two more pushes up, trading range, resumption. And I'm getting scared here. And this is the one from my interview with Al. Spike all in one bar, pull back, channel with two more pushes up, sideways, resumption. So understanding this I, just makes it way more clear for me. So I wanted to share that. And then the last part is management. So, and then finally, management. So Al talks about exiting based on change of behavior or a change of direction. So change of behavior is anything that could lead to um, a larger pullback. So the most aggressive form of um, an exit is exiting below bear bar. And um, this one, Al talks about in the interview, he says, if you exit below bear bar, you have to get back in. It's often a trap and you have to re-enter. 
yeah. in this case, it's a very big bull break. And I say, wow, look at that bar. That's very different from all these other bars. Something right. has changed. This bar has changed, right? Uh, so when you see that, you got to think, yeah, I got to buy. And even if you bought the close and get up below the spare bar, if the market is in uh, a trending mode or possibly a trending mode and you exit, uh, in, in this case, a bull trend, as soon as you see a bull bar closing uh, near its high or above its midpoint, you buy again. So you buy above that bar, you buy above that bar, you buy above that bar, you buy above this bar, you buy above that bar. Bull bar closing near its high, you buy above that. Bull bar closing near its high, buy above that. If you get out below this bear bar, you buy again, you buy again, you buy again. Only look to buy. So, and you know, what does Al say and how to buy? If you don't know anything, wait for a bull bar closing near its high and enter on a stop one tick above the high of the bar. And you can put your stop below the low of the bar. So you buy above this bar, put a stop below. You buy above this bar, put a stop below. You buy above that bar, stop below. If you get stopped out here, you can buy again. And you know, some swing traders will be very quick to get out. And those are swing traders who are quick to get back in. Right. If you find that you get out below 51 and you do not buy again above 52 or 53, right? You've got to change what you're doing, right? right? And that's one of the big problems with scalpers in trends. They take the first scalp and then they never get back in. Right. Right. And that's why traders should focus on swing trading because they'll miss too many trades. And how do you get back in? Um, you can see where to get out. If you're long, you get up below 50, you get up below bear bar closing below its midpoint, below 51, below um, 56 or 57, below 61. Right. And where do you get long again? I've said several times already today, if, if the market is, if it's not, if, if it's not a good short, then it's probably still long and you have to just wait for a bull bar closing near its high and place an order to buy one tick above the high of the bar and right. just do it and hold on. And if you find yourself doing it and exiting with one or two points profit, you know, go to Walmart, go out and take a walk for 10 minutes, do, do something to stop yourself from doing that. Right. Right. If you're a swing trader, you know, you cannot be scalping. You know, if you're a swing trader, then swing trade. So um, a bear bar in a spike phase is often a trap. So if you're exiting below the first bear bar in the spike phase, you have to get back in above a bull bar or above the high of the move. The bear bar becomes a bull flag on a lower time frame. It's also okay to stay long through the first strong bear bar since it's often a trap. So here on Thursday, we had strong spike. First bear bar 17, uh, uh, 19, buyers below, went above. So you can exit below 19, but then you have to get back in above a bull bar or above the entire move, so above the 18 high, because that would turn this bar 19 bear, bear bar into a bull flag. Or you enter again above 22. Here again, strong breakout, then we get another push up, then we get a bear bar. That was a trap as well, led to one more leg up. Here, it didn't trigger below the bear bar, but that first bear bar in the spike phase is often a trap. And then the day from the interview with Al, strong breakout, 51 is a bear bar. It was a trap. Trap for bears to sell and also uh, a trap because Al often says that really good swing trades, really strong trends, often trap uh, swing traders out early with an early bear bar, an early disappointing bar. And so all these examples, you get an early bear bar that looks scary for a bull who's long um, and that traps them out. So all of these situations, that first bear bar, it's okay to hold, uh, at least from the data I have uh, in these charts, it's okay to hold because it's often a trap. Here again, strong two, ball, two uh, bar breakout, bear bar, trap below. So it's okay, Al says it's okay to exit below there, but then you have to get back in above the move or above a bull bar. But I think it's okay to stay long just because of all these trap examples. Here as well, strong spike, and then 35 is a bear bar, but trap again. So in the spike phase, um, we know that the first pullback is gonna lead to trend resumption in the form of a channel. So there isn't that much urgency to exit uh, below that first bear bar. And then Al talks about exiting a certain distance below a bar. And as soon as you get in, um, you put a stop um, below the most recent low, 52, or the size of a scalp 
below, let's say you bought 54, you can get out the size of a scalp below 54 or um, below a bear bar, um, 56. A swing trader, you can get out below a bear bar closing below its midpoint and then buy again above the next bull bar closing near its high, all right? And, or you can also get out below a bull bar. If the market goes far below a bull bar, you cannot hold forever because sometimes it'll go below a bull bar and go really far below that bull bar. If you're, if, if you're selling in a bull trend with stop orders and you're making money, the bull trend has probably become a much weaker bull trend, like a bull channel, or it has probably become a trading range or possibly even a bear trend. So if you're a bull and you're, you've been buying at the market or at the high, and now you see stop order bears making money, you, know, you cannot be buying at the high anymore. You have to switch and buy pullbacks. Right. That's why I'm saying that you get out the size of a stop order scalp below any bar, including below a bull bar, because if the bears are making stop order money with stop orders, then the bull trend is not the bull trend that it was. It's no longer a really strong bull trend, and therefore you cannot be long um, at the high of the at the high of the day. So here in these trends, again, a certain distance, so a scalp unit below eighteen would get you out, then you have to get back in. But then throughout this whole channel, it never falls a scalp unit below any of these bars until 30. And a lot of a lot of the strongest trends look like that. Like here, it didn't fall below uh, a scalp unit below any bar until here. Here, it didn't fall a scalp unit until up here. So you'd be able to participate in all of this. But then if you do exit one scalp unit below, you get back in above a bull bar. So at any point, even this example, if you get in, get out below a bear bar, then you get back in above a bull bar, and then you get back out below the bear bar. So these aggressive forms of exits, here it doesn't um, it doesn't fall one scalp unit below until this bear bar here. But these aggressive forms of exits they require reentries. So here, for example, spike phase. If you exit one scalp unit below this bar, then you have to get back in above 54, 55. And here, if you exit below a bear bar, you get back in. It doesn't fall one scalp unit below any of these bars until up here at 56, but then you get back in above 58. Uh, and Alan talks about this in the interview. You get back in above 58 or above 68. And here, it never falls one scalp unit below any bar until up here. Here, it doesn't fall one scalp unit until up here. So you, you get a, lot, a big chunk of these trends, if, even if you use some of the most aggressive management techniques. Here doesn't fall one scalp unit at all, all day until the until the end of day. Here, really unusual strong breakout doesn't fall one scalp unit below any bar until up here. So you, you just with that extremely strict management criteria, you would be able to sit through this, sit through this entire trend. And it's rare to have a trend as strong, but in most cases, it does get you a big chunk of the move. Here it wouldn't. Here you'd have to exit below here. But then you have to get back long above 38, 39, 40. And then you get uh, you get out again below 47. So um, same thing here. Doesn't fall one scalp unit below any bar until somewhere up here. So if you bought anywhere in here, if you're using that management criteria, you can stay long for most of that trend until the trading range starts. So two options for that is one is exit one scalp unit below any bar because as Al says, if it if the stop order bears are making money, so if bears are making a scalp selling below bars in the trend, it's probably transitioning into a trading range of some kind. But for a more conservative approach, you can exit one scalp unit below a strong bull bar. So a lot of times it'll fall, um, it'll fall one scalp unit below a doji, but it won't fall below the bull bar. And so here, for example, it might fall a scalp unit below this doji but it doesn't fall a scalp unit below the strong bull bar. And so that is a more conservative approach. It keeps you in longer, but then obviously you give up more profit. The next form, which is more, more hands-off than this exiting a scalp unit below a strong bull bar, is exiting below two consecutive bear bars. So you can see here for this trend, there was one bear bar 19, but you don't exit there if you exit only when you get two consecutive bear bars. So you exit below 32, but then you get long again above 39 or 40, and then you exit below 45. Here, you get a bear bar here, you get a bear bar here, you don't exit, but then you exit here after two bear bars. And this is more hands-off and it gives you a much bigger chunk of 
of the trend. So here you don't get two bear bars until right here, but it doesn't go below. We get the trend resumption, still no two bear bars. So two bear bars are actually quite rare in these really strong trends. But here, the first time you get two consecutive bear bars is right here. And then you don't buy the high one because two bear bars, but then you can buy again above here or above here. Here as well, spike phase, one bear bar only, one bear bar only, two bear bars. That's a sign that trading range might be starting and then bulls buy again above here for the resumption phase. And then here, the, the example in the interview with Al again, you get one bear bar 51. So if you bought during 50, you don't exit below 51. You get two bear bars here, you exit below 57, but then you have to get long again, maybe not above 58 because it's coming after two bear bars, but then you get long above maybe 68, and then you don't get two consecutive bear bars for the rest of the day. Here, if you buy 61 or 60, sorry, if you buy 62 or 63, you get two bear bars here, but it doesn't go below. And then here you get two bear bars and you exit below that. So you get a big chunk of a lot of these moves. Here, if you buy anywhere in here, two bear bars up here, then you exit because we're probably going sideways and you re-enter above 20, uh, 28. Here, don't get two consecutive bear bars uh, for the rest of the day. Here, if you buy anywhere in here, you don't get, you get two consecutive bear bars here, but it doesn't go below. Then you get two consecutive bear bars here. It goes below, so you exit and then you buy again above a bull bar. And then you don't get two consecutive bear bars again until here, 70, 73. And this, I think it's worth mentioning that this is not including any other price action read. So you're not using any discretion. For example, here, you might say, well, we got the spike and channel, and then we got to break out above a wedge, and this is a possible climax. And so you may exit on the climax, you may exit below a bear bar and change your, your management approach depending on where we are in the market cycle. This is just looking at two bull bars only. So if you add in that discretion, I think uh, the probabilities increase significantly. And here, we got two bear bars here, so you exit, but then you get long again above a bull bar, or this bull bar, and then we don't get two bear bars again until here, where it goes below 48. And here, if you buy anywhere in here, I'm showing a lot of these examples because I think they're useful. Uh, so it's gonna be a little bit redundant, but I think it's important to look through all of them. So here we got breakout 1819. If you buy anywhere there, no two bull, no two consecutive bear, bar, bear bars until 35 up here. And then we get a trading range, and then you buy for trend resumption up when it forms a larger pattern. Here, anywhere in here, if you buy, you don't exit below 35, you get two bear bars here. So 47, 48. And I'm talking about this in a bit because this isn't always in flip. So it changes the character. I mean, 47, 48 is something different than we, we saw in any of these other examples. So those are the two bear bars. So you might give up more on a day like this if you're swing trading. Um, I don't think, and also I'm not planning on starting to, starting to swing trade. Um, I think this is just important for me to understand the cycle and how to manage the trades um, and to not psych myself out of, of the entries that present themselves within uh, these breakouts. So I'm not planning on buying and just holding and using these exact management criteria, but it's just a kind of a mental note to know that we don't even have two consecutive bear bars yet. There's, this is not a climax and it's not like it can't go any higher. And then obviously exit below major higher lows. So in this case, it's a little bit more hands off. Even if you get two bear bars, your, your stops below the higher low at the start of the channel. And then when you get a breakout, you tighten it to here. And then you get a pullback, you tighten it to here. So that's the most hands off approach. But here you get the channel, you put your stop here, and then you get a breakout, you put your stop here and then you get the final resumption. And then there's a change of direction, they're always in flip. So in these failure conditions, um, you can clearly see something that's characteristically different from all those other examples, which is these two giant bear bars. And so if you are swinging it and then you see these two giant bear bars, not only is it an exit, but in many cases it's an always in flip and it's a, it's a short. So an aggressive trader could also flip to short after seeing that. And same thing as here is a really strong breakout about this range from yesterday, but then you get these two strong bear bars. That's an always in flip. So it's no longer doing what all these other examples were doing. Uh, it's very different. And even this one here, if you're waiting for trend resumption and then you see these two giant bear bars, that's an always in flip. So at least a second leg down, possibly a reversal. Here we got a really strong breakout and then got a large second leg down. Here we got the two bear bars. That led to a new low of day and then a second leg down. 
Here we got a really strong breakout above this range. And so bears who are using, sorry, bulls who are using the two bear bar approach would exit there anyways. And then there would be no reason to get back long. But for a trader who's using the, the exit at the higher lows, like trail, trail with higher lows, um, if they see this, then that's an always in flip and it's short for a second like that at least. Same here. So this is different than this day and this day. So we had strong breakout and then doji and then there were buyers below. And so we got one bear bar, didn't close below and then reversed up. On this day, we had a strong breakout, doji, then bear bar, and then reverse right up. The difference here is that we got bear bar and then doji, so consecutive bear bars. That's different than all those other examples. So if you use the two consecutive bear bar approach to exiting these, then you would stay long in all those conditions, and in this one you'd exit, and you would save yourself from all this. And so that's pretty much what I covered here, the failure conditions. So three consecutive bear bars are really rare in all these examples. If you just look through all of them, three consecutive bear bars usually happens when the trading range is starting. Um, I mean, as it is two consecutive bear bars and for it to trigger below two consecutive bear bars is already rare, but three consecutive is probably a sign that the trading range has started, especially if they're bigger. Um, indicates that we're probably, we're not probably in a trading range. And then two strong consecutive bear bars, flip the always in direction and the traders start to short, which is these large failure conditions that I showed here. And finally, the hybrid approach, which I think is the best approach, uh, takes the most experience and something that I'm, I'm looking to, to strive to get better at, um, which is in the spike phase, you're more lenient. So you don't exit below one bear bar. You might exit below two consecutive or three consecutive bear bars um, to give it more room, knowing that that first pullback will be bought and that the channel phase will start. And then in the channel phase, then you might start exiting one scalp unit below any bar or below a bear bar late in the channel. So here, for example, you don't exit below a bear bar because it's a spike phase, but then you exit below a bear bar during the channel phase, which would be here. Or you know we're getting late in the channel phase and so we should be starting a trading range. And so in this phase, you look to exit one scalp unit below any bar. So here as well, we have a spike. You don't exit below a bear bar here or here, but then once we get the third push up, then you exit below a bear bar. So more of a hybrid approach that you change your management strategy depending on where we are in the market cycle, which is what Al teaches. And then in this case, if you exit because of the channel and then you exit one scalp unit below, then you get long again above a bull bar. That, that um, is a reasonable stop entry buy. And then in a trading range, you follow Al's rules of buy low, sell high scalp. So you change your management criteria knowing that we're in a trading range now. And then for resumption, it could be a climax. So then in the resumption phase, sorry, in the resumption phase, maybe you exit with more strict criteria uh, because it could be a climax. Now I'm thinking this is a climax, but this is an area where we can start a larger trading range because we have we have trading range and trading range and resumption. If this is really strong, it could be um, the largest move late in a trend and lead to a larger trading range. So I hope that was helpful. Um, just seeing all these examples for me. Um, like I've known this market structure, but just seeing all the examples really um, made it clear to me about where I'm getting scared and what's actually likely to happen next. Um, so I feel like this was really a uh, really good exercise for me and I hope it's helpful for you as well. If you have any insights on, on this and if you have a different opinion or uh, just any feedback in general, I'd love to hear it um, and love to have a discussion about it. So please let me know what you think and um, have a good weekend.